Hey guys, it's Gaijin Hunter. A lot of you email me and ask me what is my setup? How do you record 3DS videos? So I just wanted to make a quick little video to show you up my setup and how I record 3DS videos. Now of course everyone's setup is different, the way you can do it is different, but the essentials are the same. Now unless you're recording your footage using your smartphone, which even I did it first and is certainly fine, um, but if you want to up your video production, you're going to have to get it modded, which as far as I know they only do in Japan right now. They literally need to open up the unit and install a new chip inside of it, which has a micro USB video out. Now once you have your 3DS modified, then all you'll need is a micro USB cable to plug it into the back of your 3DS. Now if you're using Windows alone, that's more than enough because the free software that the modifiers give you, which is kind of like a viewer software on the computer, also carries audio over on the Windows version. However, I also use the Mac version, which is a little bit behind, so I need audio. So I used to use a standard USB to audio out by Sony. This just came, I think, with my video camera. And I use it to plug it into my 3DS here. Now it does it is kind of a Frankenstein setup, but hey, if this is what you gotta do to get good videos, it's what you gotta do. Then I often just place it in front of myself so I can play as I'm watching the videos that I'm making. Then if you go to your desktop again, the modifiers will give you a link to download their software. It's very basic though, um, and it's basically a viewer soft for your 3DS. Now because I'm using Mac and I'm using an audio in, I'll use QuickTime screen record in order to get my footage and the audio from that external. Now this is my desk setup. A lot of you have asked me to see this as well. I'm quite proud of it. Um, it's a little overkill, but I do use the 27 inch 5K iMac, which I really love. Um, I didn't have any space for my PS4, so I have it on my desk. And I recently bought this AK Racing gaming chair. I bought it because I really wanted it for my back because I also do work at home a lot. So this helps keep your back really straight and good posture through elongated periods of time. You can see it's like right next to my bed. This is my own little office, my little man cave in my bedroom. So very limited space, but you can do a lot with it. Okay, now that we've got our 3DS hooked up, it's time to take a video. So again, we're gonna go ahead and open up the capture software, which comes with the modification of the 3DS. They'll give you a product key, so you definitely need to do that. For at least the Mac version, you wanna make sure that you're locked down to 30 frames per second, but the Windows version does allow for 60 frames per second capturing, which is really nice. Of course, Monster Hunter X or Generations is only 30 frames per second, so it really didn't matter. One of the woes of a 5K screen is this is actually the size of 1080p. It's super small. Now everything scales and looks really crisp and beautiful on this screen, but in order for me to be able to look at it as I'm recording, I do have to sort of screen capture at a much higher size. It's really not a big deal, it just means that my file sizes for screen captures are much larger than they probably need to be. But I can just downscale when I'm making my video. So let's go in here, I can't do it because I'm currently screen recording now, but I'm going to do screen record with my line in mic and make a video. Okay, so here we are with a sample video, it's just me running around and hey look, it's the Yoshi TV. <laughs> so uh, I started out using a program called Camtasia 2, it's a fantastic editing program. It doesn't have a lot of bells and whistles, but it has everything that you need. I actually did all my Monster Hunter 4 u tutorials using that software. Uh, but now I'm using Final Cut Pro 10. It doesn't matter what program you use. I think all uh, video editing software that's a little bit above the free range has basically all the tools that you're going to need. Um, go ahead and create a new project. You can set the file size in Final Cut Pro. And then I'm just going to start dragging all my videos onto my timeline. Now I won't go too deep into how editing works, um, but you guys can also make videos using free software and, you know, make nice videos as well. Go ahead and drag in my intro video which i have and also my background it's always good to make sure that you keep all of your common reusable assets in a single folder or in your library um, for easy usage okay just do some final adjustments here the background's great this is what i use on all my videos let's bring this down to 100 percent now one thing to note is that the 3DS looks really good on the 3DS, but as a blown up size it looks pretty bad. So I do recommend that you shrink your video down at least a little bit to sort of curb the amount of pixelization that you get. Then because it's just an image on a background you can do some fancy things like adding a white box behind it or just a dr simple drop shadow will suffice as well in my opinion. 
Now either before or after I go ahead and take footage and then edit it all together, I want to take audio. I definitely do post or pre-edit audio so that I'm not doing it at the exact same time I'm playing. Um, to do this, I'm using the Audio-Technica 2020A uh, USB mic. It's great because it's a very nice, good sounding mic, but it uses USB, so you don't need some weird special audio boxes. Any type of cheap wind filter would be great. It definitely helps with the pee 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 and poo poo sounds that you might get when saying certain words. So we're going to go ahead and record our voice. Now, I do recommend that you script out your videos if you're doing a tutorial. It allows you to say things with stuttering a little bit less than you may normally do. It allows you to sound a little bit more natural, and I think it makes for a better product at the end. That being said, you will have several takes where you fumble over words, so go ahead and first edit out any of the bad takes that you had. So this was a first take that I did, which was a flub. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that out and keep only the stuff that you want. Align it all up, and this takes a very long time. Um, one of the things that's uh, interesting that you may not think to do is to edit out all your breaths. Um, and not only if you do sound equalization later, which you don't have to do to make a pretty good video, um, but if you do, you'll, those sounds like the breaths will be just enhanced even more. And not only that, just taking out the breathing sounds does make it feel a lot more crisper and more professional sounding. Okay, after you add in, let's say, a background track and you've got everything lined up and looking good, it's time to export. Now, when you upload to YouTube, it will downgrade some of the quality through the encoding. So I definitely recommend you don't go cheap here. Use whatever the best possible export settings the program that you're using will allow. It doesn't matter if the file is really big, unless I guess your internet upload speed is really crap. Um, go ahead and rename it. I'm using a plugin from Compressor, which gives me even better quality than your standard Final Cut, but really just use the Mac settings. Um, and a lot of these programs have little checkboxes saying to optimize it for transcoding for YouTube, and I definitely recommend you do that. It will make it for faster and better quality processing. Okay, now that our export is done, and exports can take a very long time depending on the size of your video, how many edits you have, um, your computer, Go ahead and watch it down, make sure that everything's looking really good. And then start the upload process on YouTube. Now one of the things is the YouTube upload process can take quite some time. So what I like to do is while I'm uploading my video is to then create the thumbnail for it. I use a program called Pixelmator on Mac. It's really great. It's almost like Photoshop, but only like 30, 40 bucks. You can't go wrong. So go ahead and open up your last project. This, again, just keeping everything so that there's a format makes it much easier to edit later and to create new content. So this is just the thumbnail for my last tutorial, and I've now used that as a template to create a little thumbnail for this test video. So that's basically it. So the investment for cost, you will need to pay for the hardware modification of your 3DS to get that nice capture quality. Um, you can do it on free software, but I do recommend you spending a little bit of money on some video editing software that has some better tools and better quality exports. Um, but beyond that, it's just time. So really just a huge thank you to everybody in the Monster Hunter community that takes time to create any type of guides. I mean, whether it's video or it's a very long uh, FAQ or a guide that's in text format, a lot of this stuff takes a lot of time. So uh, I think it's thanks to all the different content creators far and wide around the world on Monster Hunter that makes our community so great. So thank you all of you. And remember, even though really high production values are good and even I'm still trying to learn how to do a better job, it's really the love and passion and the research that makes all the content worth it. So I think just focus on that and you'll have good success hopefully. For those of you who want to see how I make my videos, I hope this video was interesting and until next time, happy hunting.